defensive X factors. Mm. And I want like I want us to think about, and I want the the people in the chat section to think about who's a player that maybe we're not talking about. Mm. Not you know Tremaine Edmonds, not Trey White, not Micah Hyde, not Jordan Poyer. Who's maybe a guy that we're not talking about that could end up being like a Pro Bowler this year or an X Factor player who does something on the the stat sheet that really yeah. sticks out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a great question. And I think like there are guys that we have talked about that I'm going to kind of pass over for this specific mm -hmm. conversation. We've talked a lot about Josh Norman in the past as him coming in for a one year, but I'm not going that route. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. not going with anyone in the secondary. I'm not going with anybody in the linebacking core. Um, I'm actually going to go with uh, kind of like a one A and a one B, but they play the same position in the, in the reason I'm going this route is because of sort of what was left behind by the player that departed in this role. And that player that departed was Jordan Phillips. So mm -hmm. the, the, the guys that I'm looking for that could potentially be stat sheet stuffers from an inside rush pass pers inside pass rush perspective are one Vernon Butler is a guy that I don't think we're talking about enough. Um, first round, former first round pick from the Panthers. He's almost identical in physical stature to Jordan Phillips. He's 330, mm -hmm. right? Um, he's got, obviously, the pedigree coming coming out as a first-rounder. Started to kind of maybe get his footing a little bit last year in Carolina and I think is going to be looking to prove that he's got something to offer, sort of like a Jordan Phillips did with us last year as he kind of paved his way to leading the team in sacks. Juan says Harrison Phillips, he's my 1B. That's a great comment, Juan. The, the reason I'm putting him as 1B is just because we're not sure exactly what we're going to get from Horrible mm -hmm. Harry as he's coming off the injury. I hope that he comes back better than ever, and maybe Vernon Butler and him will have a nice little competition there for that one technique spot um, in the rotation. But I think right now I'll give the edge to Vernon Butler, see what he can do given that pedigree. And, and yeah, I'm thinking – from that spot, I mean, look, we saw that position produce close to double-digit sacks last year. Uh, so who knows? Maybe that's a that's another you know that's another year where maybe we, we see that six to eight sack range coming out of that one technique spot. So let's let's see what we can get there. Yeah, Tom Tom Winter chimed in. Whoever can get some sacks, um, you know, dot dot dot. Ed Oliver. I'll tell you what. My my thought process going into this was sacks as well, but I'm not going with with Ed Oliver. I think that our defense is going to see a philosophical shift this, this year with the, the loss of Lorenzo Alexander. I mean, Lorenzo Alexander was an absolute unicorn. He could drop back into coverage. He could set the edge. He could rush the passer. He could play special teams. I mean, the, the man could, could do just about anything on the football field on the defensive side of the, of the field that, that you asked him to do. And, you know, he's a missing component of that defense and he's not mm -hmm. going to be replaced by any one singular player. You're going to see AJ Klein replace him sort of on the rundowns and on the, and on the goal line, you are going to see, um, you know, maybe Saran Neal step in and take some big nickel, um, you know, snaps. You're going to see Teron Johnson uh, maybe on the field more as, as a nickel as well. Maybe see D Dane Jackson, EJ Gaines. What, what mind you, I think you're going to see more guys in the secondary, but Lorenzo Alexander made an interesting comment on, I believe it was um, Matthew Perino's, um, you know, podcast when they were interviewing him. It could have been the West Her interview. I, I apologize. He did a whole bunch of interviews that week. And he stated that he thinks that Mario Addison is going to do a really good job filling his role. Mm. And that's my player that I'm going with. And it's Mario Addison. Not because um, I think he's going to step in and be our strong side linebacker. I, I don't think that. I, like I said, I think there's going to be a philosophical shift in the defense. I think Mario, Mario Addison is going to come off the bench, a $13 million player. Is going to come off the bench, and that's why I sort of have him under the radar a little bit. I think people are sleeping on him. This guy had has had nine and a half, nine, eleven, and nine and a half sacks the last four years. Practically a double digit sack guy for the past half decade, mm -hmm. and no one really talked about him in free agency this year, probably because he's older, probably because he's not the flashiest athlete in the world. But I'll tell you what, I see some of his off season videos. He's looking good, and I think the Buffalo Bills are going to use him in a role where you haven't seen the Bills use a player in this role. Like I think you're going to see him taking, you know, blitzing from the middle. I think you're going to see him backing up Jerry Hughes and coming in and playing right end. I think you're going to see him playing left end. I think you'll see him rushing with his hand up, coming, you know, playing from that 3-4. He's proven he's literally going to be on the field in five, six, seven spots. He's going to come on and off the field and play multiple positions and rush the passer for multiple positions. So I think it's going 
I think that's what's going to be really interesting about Voshan Joseph. I think, Vo or not Voshan Joseph, I just saw Voshan Joseph in the comment section. I guess what's really interesting about Mario Addison. And I wouldn't be surprised if not only does Mario Addison continue on his trend of getting, you know, nine and a half, 10 sacks, I wouldn't be surprised if he pushes 15, 16 sacks this year. Um, you know, the way our secondary can, can you know, really wreak havoc on the court quarterback with Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer causing headaches and Trey White. And, you know, with the rest of our defensive line getting sort of a makeover and being better at setting the edge, I think Mario Addison could be primed for, for a 15, 16 sack year. But can a guy that's making thirteen million dollars a year really be under the radar? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I do. I do. National, I think from a national perspective, he is, and that's what I that's think. What I'm going I, with here. I agree with you. From from free agency, he was under the radar. I agree mm -hmm. with you there. But I think now that the money he's getting, he's not so under the radar. He's going to be on my radar. I'll tell you that. But I, uh, <laughs> but I I even feel like most of the the interactions we have with 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 fans and things like that, I still feel like we're not. Uh, I feel like we're not – what's the word I'm looking for? I feel like we're just not hearing his name as much as we're hearing yeah. Ed Oliver, as much yeah. as we're hearing yeah. – someone said, does Matt Milano count? I, I'm not counting Matt Milano. Like, I love Matt <laughs> Milano. I'm not counting Matt Milano because I think most Bills fans um, know and appreciate Matt Milano. Maybe this is yeah. the year that Matt Milano jumps onto the national stage, um, but uh, I, I wouldn't go with Matt Milano here. Voshan Joseph um, was the interesting comment earlier. It'll be interesting to see um, – what kind of it's going to be really interesting for me camp is you're right with training camp it's going to be really interesting to see what the bills have in mind for Voshan Joseph is mm -hmm. he going to be strictly Matt Milano's backup sort of like hedging your bets making sure he becomes the best weak side linebacker he can be in case Matt Milano walks in free agency mm -hmm. are they going to try to maybe make him sort of a big ish nickel and have two weak side linebackers and and move Voshan Joseph around or move Matt Milano around it'll mm -hmm. be interesting to see um based on the shortened off season, the shortened OTAs, how they utilize Voshan Joseph. But I definitely think he has the athletic traits and he's shown yeah. in college to, to be a guy who could drop back into his own coverage and to rush the passer, a guy who's capable of doing that. It'll just be really interesting to see if that's how the coaches choose to, um, you know, deploy him. And I want to thank Juan Castillo. Um, you know, he just became a new member of the Buffalo Fanatics. I believe that means he joined the premium. So uh, he said, I had to update my card guys, long time member, go Bills. We appreciate it, Juan. Um, Thank you for sticking with us and, and, and watching this show. So what where were some other uh what were some other uh names that we saw here in the comment section? I saw a couple other names. Somebody said Daryl Johnson. What are yeah. your thoughts on Daryl? Is there even a roster spot for Daryl well, Johnson? Well, this is this is the problem, I think, with Daryl Johnson. Like you're facing an uphill battle to make this team again. And given that he's practice squad eligible, um, we we know he made the team last year, right? I mean, he, he kind of was against against the odds last year to make the team as a late rounder and he made the team. I unfortunately think that his odds are even longer or worse this year, given the depth now that we have um, between Addison, Epinesa, Hughes, Murphy, right? Like Jeff Quentin Jefferson potentially playing on the edge. So uh, Daryl Johnson has an uphill climb to make the mm. roster. I envision him being practice squad, but I think he will have a good camp. I think he's going to mm. make the coaches think a little bit, but he'll probably end up on the practice squad would, would be my guess. And and here's a name that I, I think would, um, I, I've been hearing a lot about this. And I think it's because I think Sean McDermott has, has put this idea in a lot of people's heads. Will Vath comments with Josh Norman reunited with McDermott. McDermott mm. made those really interesting comments on, on good morning football. He, Sean McDermott is not the kind of guy to make excuses for people. Like he, he, he holds people accountable, but when he was on good morning football, it was kind of like he was making excuses for Josh Norman. And we know the the caliber of football player that Josh Norman was when he played under mm -hmm. Sean McDermott and he played under Eric Washington in, in Carolina. So we know what he's capable of, mm -hmm. but Sean McDermott was like, Hey, he went to Washington. They weren't using him right. He's going to have a chip on his shoulder. So it was sort of like Sean McDermott kind of pumping up and being the hype man for mm -hmm. Josh Norman, which is not usually a role you see with Sean McDermott. Usually Sean McDermott's like, well, you know, we have a good youngster named Levi Wallace. You know, we, we re-signed another veteran who had success with us in EJ Gain, Gaines. Mm -hmm. You know, Josh Josh's going to have to come in here. He's going to have to earn it. it that, that wasn't what Sean McDermott said. No. Uh, maybe, you know, his kids are around. He's feeling a little bit more jovial, sit in his basement, a little more comfortable, letting loose a little bit. Or, or maybe, you know, he did that with a reason because, um, you know, he really does feel confident that he can sort of, um, you know, bring Josh Norman back to, to what he was, or, or at least a, a, you know, a, a, a better form of what he was in Washington closer to um, what he was in Carolina. 
Um, our man Steven comment, EJ Gaines, if he can stay healthy, I could see him contributing again. I could too. Um, but the same misgiving or the same reason I'm, I'm, I'm sort of championing Josh Norman here is the same reason I sort of am a little low on EJ Gaines because in that same interview on Good Morning Football, um, Sean McDermott said, like, listen, EJ called us. Like, he said, hey, mm -hmm. I'm healthy. Can you guys give me a shot? So it wasn't like the Bills were like, hey, calling EJ all the time. Like, hey, how are you doing? You healthy? You healthy? You healthy? Like, yeah. it was sort of like it, – it's Sean McDermott sort of made it sound like he it was an added bonus. Like, oh, mm -hmm. he called us. He wants a shot. It's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, so maybe EJ Gaines can get into training camp, work his tail off, yep. stay healthy, prove the coaching staff wrong. But I think – in the coaching staff's mind, you know, he's 1C or he's number three. Like, if the coaching staff had to power rank him, I don't think he'd be as high as Norman or Wallace. I don't think so either. And if you think about the timing when they signed Gaines, it was kind of right, if I recall, like kind of during the height of when all this co the COVID stuff was kind of reaching a, a peak. And we were really unsure when the next time the team was going to be together, when they were going to be able to practice together. So, it's a low risk move for the bills to bring back EJ Gaines, a guy that has familiarity with their system. They're not going to be paying him a ton. He could probably be cut in camp if need be. So like the bills are probably just like, you know, de-risking mm -hmm. themselves at that, in that group. Okay, getting back to Norman quickly. I do think that he is, um, he is being treated a little differently. I mean, he did get the $6 million contract and uh, I don't know, maybe you saw him get that uh, pick six in the Madden Sim game and it got your juices flowing a little bit. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's uh, what it was. You know, Dave, Davion Price asks, do you guys think the rookie corner we drafted will, will make mm. the team? Dane I Jackson. Mean, yeah. It, it, it honestly seems like it's EJ Gaines versus, um, you know, Dane Jackson. At this point. I think so too. If, if you think about it, you look at this defense and one of the things is, is leave our Wallace is boundary only. He's too frail. He's not aggressive enough to play on the inside. Um, Josh Norman, again, athletic limitations. He's outside only. Trey mm -hmm. White is obviously going to be a boundary corner only. Um, you know, Hyde and Poirier are your safeties. Teron Johnson is really nickel only. Mm -hmm. Then you look at every other player on the roster, and there's a lot of versatility. Jaquan Johnson can play free safety, strong safety. Dean mm -hmm. Marlowe can play free safety. He can also play nickel. Saran Neal mm -hmm. can play nickel. He can play safety. Dane Jackson, um, while maybe he had – he has the same like stiffness that like a Levi Wallace or Josh Norman does like a, like a hip stiffness where he struggles with guys, you know, with long speed down the field. He's a lot more of an aggressive tackler. Um, and he does have a little bit more size to him. I believe about six foot one ninety five. So he's a guy who they made it clear he can play inside and outside. So mm -hmm. I think that that goes in Dane Jackson's favor is he's a guy mm -hmm. who can play inside outside. I think EJ Gaines can play inside outside as well. Um, but uh, I think it's, I, I truly think unless EJ Gaines, really steps up his game and, and and blows people away. And we look to trade a Levi Wallace for, for maybe like a, a, a mid to late draft pick. I, I don't see, um, you know, I, I see Dane Jack, it being Dane Jackson versus EJ Gaines for that depth role. And I think the youth would favor uh, a, a Dane Jackson. Yeah, I think so too. And especially given that we do have Norman now in the group, you are, you're kind of one up now with the boundary corners, right? Like mm -hmm. you're not missing that extra boundary corner that maybe you had, maybe that you were missing last year, although we did end up getting good play out of Kevin Johnson, but now between mm -hmm. Wallace white and, um, and Norman, you have three pretty solid guys and Jackson coming into the mix. Look, EJ Gaines has a lot of things going for him, right? He knows the system. He's been talented a talented player when he's been on the field, he can play inside and out, but health's always the concern with him. So if he doesn't blow them away mm -hmm. in camp, they're not paying him anything where it's going to be a risk for them to cut him, and they'll probably go with the guy they drafted. I so, really like I really like this comment from, from yeah. Sharif here. He said, yeah. Well, Ep he said, Will Epinesa have a significant impact this year? I foresee a quiet start, but more important in the second half of the year, especially when teams have to run more as the weather changes. I really like this mm. comment because Sean McDermott came out and he he made the comment like, uh, you know, this is a different year. There's no OTAs. There's going to be shortened training camps, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I don't think the Bills were expecting to draft a defensive lineman that early. I think that they yeah. did so um, because of the value of A.J. Epinesa. I think Quentin Jefferson is the guy that they really foresee in the, in the role that A.J. Epinesa is probably going to end up playing as sort of a mm – -hmm. Uh, a left end three technique tweener. Um, but that being said, the, the comment about the second half of the year is what really um, 
makes me starts getting the wheels turning in my brain there, Sharif. And that's because I think back to because McDermott said, like, oh, it's it's gonna be tough to get him, you know, the reps he needs, you know, all these things. Like, I want him to be a backup this year. He he's saying all the right things. And it makes me think back to a couple of years ago when we had a guy named Ramon Humber at weak side linebacker and a fifth round pick named Matt Milano, who it seemed like Every Bills fan wanted to give this guy a shot, but the Bills were like, right, no, week five, no, week six, no, week seven. No, it took them quite a long time to yeah. work Matt Milano into the roster, but they eventually did it. And the same can be said for Levi Wallace. This is the guy who was on the practice squad. He was on the practice squad. We were watching Philip Gaines just get pummeled week after week after week. It took eight, nine, ten weeks for the Buffalo Bills to feel comfortable throwing Levi Wallace out on the football field. So I think that, that that's something you could really see here is Sean McDermott might be saying the the, the right things. He's going to be a backup this year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if AJ Epinesa is, is, you know, they took him for a reason, even the fact, even though they didn't need him, it's because he's a really good player. So mm -hmm. I think by week eight or week nine, his talent might just be, be too much for the Buffalo Bills to keep him on the bench. And, and that's when you might see him make a big impact. Yeah, and I mean, let's let's be realistic here. Is a guy that a lot of people thought could go in the first round. The difference, big difference here between where you drafted Matt Milano and where you drafted AJ Epinesa. So there's going to be probably a little bit more urgency given where you drafted him to get him on the field a little bit sooner than maybe you felt like you needed to with Matt Milano. Although we did see those flashes from Milano and we wanted him on the field. Um, if we struggle a little bit in that edge run defense at all early in the season, there's going to be you know, there's going to be clamoring to get Epinesa in the lineup more so because we know that's kind of what we think he can be, like Quentin Jefferson type, a better version of a Shaq Lawson, right, and give you the pass rush as well. So, yeah, we'll see.